the first of all, Cosby. these aren't your dad's celebrities, and these aren't your dad's Republicans. Okay, these aren't your dad's Republicans. That's none other than Taylor Swift. Democrats thrilled with what you just heard there. She was going public against Republicans. That clip is from right before the 2020 races. Swift's political advocacy drove headlines. She found her own ways to share her politics, from explaining the personal stakes and citing women's rights to a lighter touch that fits with this era. Here she was just sharing some cookies with the Biden-Harris campaign logo, exactly the kind of straightforward, relatable, and quite frankly, shareable item that does work well online, especially if you like the person baking the cookies. Now, there are those who miss the ongoing, quite obvious impact of culture on democracy and politics. Now, that can be an odd take, considering that music and culture were such critical drivers of some of our most powerful modern protest movements from civil rights to Vietnam and the interplay as we've discussed on this program about how artists and movements and even concerts and Woodstock were all wrapped up in the awakening political, spiritual, moral of the time. So that brings us to the time we're living in now because Taylor Swift can actually do some things that that earlier generation of artists, however impassioned they were, cannot because of what I'm about to walk through with you, which is a shifting music and cultural digital environment. Take a look at these numbers. Swift was very targeted. She made a direct push for people to register to vote. And you see right there, skyrocketing among young people, people under 30 registered in the first 24 hours at the tune of tens of thousands. Now, there are themes that endure here that have nothing to do with Miss Swift or this moment. For example, artists for thousands of years have connected deeply with a broad number of people, including people who consume their work and never meet them personally. That was true even before modern media. It's especially true when artists represent something that is seen as their authentic priorities, whether that's your favorite singer or favorite writer or any medium. What is different now, and this is going to bring us to the Biden campaign, is actually that the methods are changing rapidly. Artists today actually have more power, autonomy, and reach for their message than the Woodstock era. Now, we've got a little back of the envelope math just to give you an example with the big artists. Taylor Swift's reach, for real, of people who hear from her and the sound of her voice versus, say, the reach of cable news. Full disclosure, we believe that shows like The Beat on MSNBC can provide something to the public. But if we're talking sheer numbers, Let's just be objective and nonpartisan about it. Cable news can reach anywhere from 4 to 10 million people per night over a given monthly stretch. That's an average, and it's a, just a rough ballpark of multiple channels. Swift streaming reach is 100 million through Spotify and other platforms. Meanwhile, her social media following has many tens of millions of fans. So when she says, do something, check something out, whether that's register to vote or look at this video, she is reaching people in a way that is far broader than any other artists in earlier digital eras. Meanwhile, we know the top candidates in both parties and other politicians right now, as we talk about that new streaming world, digital world and what young people can do, are also facing something that is a bipartisan situation in Congress and among the potential nominees, questions about an aging group of candidates. Concerns about lawmakers' health after incidents involving two of the most senior senators in Washington. The spotlight has been on the senator's health for some time now. She is 90 years old. 81 year old McConnell has had other health episodes this year. Overwhelming concerns about President Biden's age. Youth is not a word you would use to describe either leading presidential candidate. That's true. And the point is not to make broad generalizations about people because they are aged 80 or 20. The point is to understand that while we sometimes get pretty narrow in our habits and our sense of what defines politics or what defines a campaign ad or how these things work, we're actually living through an incredible transformation. And there are a few people, including in youth culture, who have a huge and broad impact. It would be weird to ignore them. It would be odd to pretend they're not here. And increasingly, we're hearing from some Democrats who do have this plan to try to sell Joe Biden for another round 
acknowledging that he is the oldest president ever and would continue to be so in a second term while trying to tap some benefits that may have just come to them, like someone as big as Taylor Swift already getting involved in the year 2020. So joining me now for this deep dive political conversation is a, well, it's a special day. It's Che Day. Obama veteran Che Komandori is here, and he was one of the people who raised the Taylor Swift of it all. Welcome back, Che. Good to be back, all right. Uh, let's start with the, the, the brief comparison I made. You'd have to be asleep for a generation not to know that the Vietnam protest movement, the civil rights movement, and the feminist movement, which were all at times correlated, um, involved artists in the front at the vanguard. And something that is, is kind of funny to say, especially for a, just a nerd and a Sue like me to say, but also involved artists making it cool. Uh, it was right. cool to both go to the concert, but also get more involved in saving democracy, or in their case, ending what, what many young people thought was an immoral war. And if you look at the history, LBJ was, was supposed to be able to run again. Uh, it wasn't uh, the 50-year-olds the or people situated like you and I might be uh, who made the call. It was the, the young people going first for, uh, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, McGovern, and then, uh, and then RFK and anti-war candidates, and suddenly it changed everything. Um, it was Humphrey and then RFK, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Well, Hubert Humphrey, McGovern, and RFK, yeah, right? It was yeah, all... Yeah. No, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yes. What does that have to do, Che? I let you take the hard part. What does that have to do with Taylor Swift and Joe Biden? Yeah, let me first. It was Eugene McCarthy who defeated uh, or had a good show in New Hampshire to right. force LBJ out of the race with because RFK had entered. So I just want to correct that history real quick. But great artists and great politicians do the same thing. They engage with the culture. That is something that Barack Obama did. That is something that Bill Clinton did. That is something that John F. Kennedy did. That is something that Franklin Delano Roosevelt did. Uh, it is also something that Ronald Reagan did. You know, you engage first and foremost with the culture. And that is because politicians, like artists, are storytellers. Right. This is something you can really learn from Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's success comes from the fact that she is viewed by her fans and, uh, including me, as being a very good, if not outstanding, storyteller. Politicians who tell stories are successful. Politicians who treat elections like resume contests tend to be very unsuccessful. And this is where I think Joe Biden and Kamala Harris really have to sort of think about as they go into this campaign. You know, there's a lot of discussion about the legislation that Joe Biden has passed, all of it outstanding. Historic climate change legislation, first gun control legislation in 30 years, uh, the fight for reproductive rights, they're very much on the forefront of that. However, they need to tell a story that connects with voters and with young people about where this country is going and what the next chapter of American life will be. Yeah, this and we have, I'm gonna, jump, yeah. I'm gonna jump in and say, you know, the, it's interesting because we mentioned the age thing, again, not to be ageist, it's not my thing to just grab right. groups, people, and, and, and go negative, um, but it is a political reality and a, and a substantive one. I mean, Reagan ran on questions of age, he defeated them. Biden's gonna have to yep. discuss this, but being hip to what's out there is clearly something they're keen to do. They had a, a very young artist, Olivia Rodrigo, at the White House. Um, they've done stuff with K-pop. Whether that's always getting mainstream news coverage is kind of a, I guess it depends what news you watch, but it's reaching millions of young people and saying not, oh, Joe Biden's trying to be cool or pretend he's a K-pop star, but rather he's aware of what's going on and it connects back, as you said, to authentic issues. I mean, certainly on women's rights, that's a big issue that connects him to, sure. to Swift. And I want to play a little more of this was from her own documentary, but her talking about taking risks. She has a lot of fans who are independents or Republicans or whatever. Take a look at more Taylor. We've not got involved with politics or religion. Yeah, but this is on the home front. And also, back in the presidential election, I was in such a horrendous place that I wasn't going to pop my head out of the sand for anything. Why would you? I mean, does Bob Hope do oh, it? Does Bill Crosby do it? Does, does Mick Jagger do it? Hell? Come on. No, what I'm saying right now is... Bob Hope and First Dave of all, Crosby. these aren't your dad's celebrities, and these aren't your dad's Republicans. Okay. That was the, the larger context. Yeah. She's certainly right about those lines, and also what she's arguing there, I think many listeners here would agree, is that it ain't your dad's GOP if you talk about the threat to be at women's rights or democracy. 